To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week, we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today, we'll share with you what it was like growing up on a farm on Ladder Road. The Wheelahan Farm at 1438 Ladder Road is the last of the Irish family farms in the Paddy Hill community. In 1990, a volunteer with the Greece Historical Society interviewed J. Howard Wheelahan, who lived his entire 94 years there. He described his life growing up on the farm. Howard's great-grandparents, Thomas Wheelahan and Mary Ryan Wheelahan, came to Greece from Kings County in 1836. Mary was Squire Nicholas Reed's grandniece. They had seven children, three sons and four daughters. One of their sons, William, inherited the Reed farm. Thomas and Mary's son, Patrick, born in Ireland in 1832, was Howard's grandfather, and his grandmother was Margaret Goodwin from another Greece pioneer family. She was born in 1834 to Patrick Goodwin and Rosanna Beatty. Howard's father, born in 1877, was John Patrick Wheelahan. In this photo, which hangs in the living room of the Society's Museum, Patrick is the bearded gentleman in the front row. John Patrick stands directly behind him. Margaret Goodwin Wheelahan is seated second from the left. As you can see from this map, members of the Wheelahan family had farms along Ladder Road and down Mount Reed near our Mother of Sorrows Church. After Father John Patrick Quinn became pastor of our Mother of Sorrows Church, his sister, Matilda Quinn, called Tilly, moved to Greece, became the organist and choir director of her brother's church, met John Patrick Wheelahan, who was in the choir, and married him in 1899. They moved into the home at 1438 Ladder Road, which was built for the newly married couple by Patrick Wheelahan. Their first child, Jay Donald, was born in 1903, and their second son, F. Howard, in 1905. The farm was large, and by 1908, they were expanding the number of barns to store hay and grains. But shockingly, John Patrick died in early 1909. Tilly, a widow at the age of 38, was left with a six and a four-year-old. As she said when she got home from the funeral, she had two things in life, two little boys and five dollars. After their father died, Arthur Yates from Elm Tree Farm sent the two little boys a pony. Although Tilly grew up on a farm in Macedon, she was a school teacher before her marriage and knew little about managing a farm. In addition to the crops, the farm had chickens, pigs, horses, and cattle. Neighbors and family helped initially, but she knew she'd have to get some permanent help. When she acquired around, she was told that there were two or three men she might hire, but they all had the same little trouble. Howard recounted in the interview. They liked to drink a little too much. She did hire one of them. She desperately needed the help. Farming under the best of circumstances was hard. Most of Tilly's needs could be met from the farm itself, but when she needed to buy additional goods, she didn't have ready cash. She would gather 10 to 12 dozen eggs and take them to the grocery store in Charlotte. The grocer always took her word for how many there were. He'd tally up the amount she was due, for example, $3.25. Tilly had her list and she'd walk around picking up coffee, tea, sugar, flour, etc. When the grocer told her, Mrs. Wheelahan, you're getting close to the $3.25, that was it. She had no more money. Tilly would keep old papers and iron bits like plow points for the rag and scrap men who would come from the city to collect them. She stored them near the chicken shed. One time, a scrap man stopped at the farm. He weighed the paper and iron she had and paid for them. But the next day, Tilly discovered that every one of her hens was gone. Most likely, the scrap man had stolen them. Tilly depended on those hens for her grocery money. Soon, all her neighbors each gave her two hens, and her hen house was replenished. In the early decades of Howard's life, there was no electricity or running water in the house. The house was heated by a cook stove in the kitchen and a pot belly coal stove in the parlor. Taking a bath was quite an undertaking, which is one reason why they didn't have one very often. 
If they were going to see the doctor or the dentist or before going to church on Sunday, Howard said, naturally, we would have to take a bath. They would pump about two pails of water to heat on the stove. That could take up to 40 minutes to heat. Then they had to haul the heated water down to the basement where there was a tub they could bathe in. In late summer or early fall, they would hitch a team to a box wagon and drive down to Grease Lumber on Ladder Road, which would be near the bridge over the parkway today. They also sold coal. The two boys would fill the wagon with two tons of chestnut coal. They'd store it in the cellar and use it all winter in the pot belly stove in the parlor. In addition to raising potatoes, cabbages, and every kind of berry for themselves, Tilly also had a contract with a hotel on the Arundacoit side of the river. This was in the days before the Stutson Street Bridge. Howard and Donald would load up a wagon with potatoes, and they and horse and wagon would cross the river on a flat boat called the Windsor that ran on a chain. Howard also recalled that there were two major parties during the winter. One was always at Leo Wheelahan's home next to our Mother of Sorrows Church. The other was the Janes family home on Long Pond, which was the former Peter Larkin home. In summer, they looked forward to going to the farmer's picnic every year at Manitow Beach. Another of his relatives, State Senator Frederick Slater, organized it every year. In this picture, Senator Slater is on the far right. On the way home, he'd start making plans for the next year's picnic. Because, said Howard, none of us had any pleasure between them. Howard also talked about the big freeze of 1934. They raised apples on their farm, some to be sold to Duffy Mott. He recalled lying awake at night, hearing the apple trees breaking. He said it sounded like a man was out there with a big board, hitting the barn as hard as he could. The next morning, when they went out, they could put an arm through any tree, because they had all split open. Matilda never remarried. Even so, she successfully ran that farm for years and was able to send her oldest son, Donald, to the University of Rochester and Harvard Law School. Howard took over the farm. The transcript of the interview with Howard Wheelahan is available at the Greece Historical Society to anyone interested in finding out more about growing up on Leda Road. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, we go shopping at Northgate Plaza. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.